A few weeks ago, I got my hands on 3D Maker Pro's latest budget scanner, the Seal. I made a whole video about it and you can watch that for more details of the scanner's performance, but the TLDR is that the Seal is nothing special. As much as I enjoy the immediate nature of scanning, the results are nothing to write home about. Since then, I've been experimenting with it just to see if I can get some better results out of it. And even though you won't be able to get photogrammetry type of results, there are some tips and tricks you can follow that will improve the scanning results. Does that mean that you should go out and buy a budget scanner like the SEAL? <laughs> Absolutely not. You're better off with photogrammetry. But if you're looking for a quick prototyping tool and you don't care so much about intricate details, I would say watch this video, see what's possible, and then evaluate if a budget scanner is for you. So let's see things in more detail. One of the main issues you will have with a scanner is aligning all the different scans together. And it's especially tricky with a seal. In most cases, auto alignment doesn't work that well. So you always have to rely on aligning your scans manually. This can get tricky, especially if your object has repeating patterns or very symmetrical features. But thankfully, there are ways to make things easier for ourselves. And one of the most simple but extremely effective ways to go about it is by not waiting until the end to align your scans. So instead of scanning all the different sides of the object first and then trying to align them, do things in smaller chunks. Scan two sides first align those, and then continue the scanning and alignment process for the rest of the object. This workflow has a lot of benefits. First off, because we're doing things in smaller chunks, the scans are fresh in our memory, so it's easier to mark the right points for the alignment. With this approach, it's also easier to see which areas of the object are left to scan. If there are gaps in the point clouds, that's the area to focus next. Another thing that will improve the overall quality of the final model is to go through the meshing process as you scan the object. Usually, once I have two or three scans ready, I'll mesh them and see where the model's at. That way, it's easier to figure out if the parts that were scanned need a second pass to get a cleaner result. Meshing is usually very fast with these small passes, so you won't have to wait long for the mesh to show up. By following these simple steps, I managed to scan a lot of objects and get some good results. Of course, good results for a budget scanner standards. An expensive professional scanner would give us infinitely better results. Okay, so this workflow works great with objects that have a lot of variance in their features, like a measuring tape, a game controller, stuff like that. For trickier objects where we have symmetrical features or repeating patterns, we need to add an extra step to our workflow. And that's capturing the object's color data, even if you're not planning to create a texture. That will give the point cloud one extra reference point we can use to our advantage. Having this color information will make things much easier when all the shapes look the same. In some cases, I even make small marks on the object, just with a regular pencil. These marks are enough to get a good alignment. Of course, this solution might not be possible on all objects, and this is the point where you could use markers, small bits of post-its, or whatever else you think will be good for the surface. Now, the next thing to keep in mind when scanning is taking into account the different surfaces of the object. Let's take as an example the iconic Game Boy. Most of it is white, which is perfect for all types of scanners, but there's also the black D-pad, which is tricky to scan. And we can see the issue quite easily from the very first pass. As you can see, on regular settings, the black D-pad doesn't register at all. We just have a big hole where the D-pad is supposed to be. In this instance, we have to adjust these settings. So once I was done with all the sides of the Game Boy, I did one more pass where I turned the brightness all the way up. All the other parts of the Game Boy were blown out, but this extra brightness was enough for the dark parts to register. So always keep that at the back of your head. If you're having issues with specific areas of an object, adjust the settings and do another pass just for those small bits and pieces. Which brings us to another important part in the scanning process, cleaning up the individual scans and getting the final mesh. 
This can be an infuriating process in 3D Maker Pro's software. And that's because what the manual says and how the feature actually works is totally different. So the manual says that once we're in the edit mode, we can choose the selection mode we want and then hold down control to make the selection. But that key, at least on the Mac, doesn't do that at all. If I hold down the control key, I just move the object around. I quickly figured out that the key that I actually need to hold down is the option key. But then there's the next stumbling block. If I make a selection, nothing gets selected. The only way I managed to actually make a selection was by first clicking on the select all command, selecting the bits I want to delete, which actually means I deselect them, I then invert the selection, and finally, once that's done, I hit the delete button to get rid of all the points. It's the most roundabout way of doing things, but it's the only way that actually works for me. Despite this quirky behavior, the rest of the cleanup process is relatively easy. For example, getting rid of the turntable's bottom doesn't involve much. We just have to pick an angle that contains all the ground points, make a selection, and then just hit delete. So if we do that in all the scans that contain the ground, we will end up with a clean object without any unnecessary information. Ground aside, I also clean up other areas that might look a little bit too noisy. For example, in this measuring tape, the metal clasp was tricky to scan. The scanner added a lot of messy points around it. So once I had my scans, I went in and cleaned up the area just to make sure that the parts look closer to the real thing. It's still not perfect, and we still have some blobby areas, but things would have been much worse with all the other extra points added. By the way, if you want to, you can also go in and clean up individual frames by just double clicking on the scan, but I never actually do that. I just clean up the scan as a whole. In some cases though, this could help, so keep that in mind. Either way though, no matter how much you clean up your scans and trying to capture every single nook and cranny, you won't be able to get a perfect scan. It's a budget scanner after all. Only if the surface and the object details have the right properties and size, you can get a good enough scan. Let's take as an example this shoe support. The scan looks good because the object has the right properties. It has big enough details, it's not a dark material, and it's made out of cardboard, so there are no big shiny areas. One thing that could slightly improve your meshing results, and it's something that I've experimented with, is exporting the point clouds to another software. The results won't be that much different though, so I almost hesitate to make that suggestion. I'll show you though how it's done, so you can try things yourself. Each point cloud can be exported as a PLY file, so once we have that ready, we can go into Metashape or the program of your choice and import the point clouds one by one. After the first import, Metashape will ask you if you want to replace the existing point cloud. Just pick no and import the rest. Once we have all the data there, we're ready for meshing. Merge all the clouds into one and delete the rest. The point cloud that will have all the data will be the one with a higher number. Now, here's the important bit for meshing when using Metashape. With a point cloud selected, you need to go to Transform Region and then Reset Region. And then select the meshing command and wait for the software to work its magic. Once more, the quality result is not going to be that much different, so I wouldn't really worry about this step, but it comes in handy if you want to combine point clouds and photogrammetry data. And that about wraps things up for this video. I would say if you're buying a budget scanner, no matter the brand, just try to manage your expectations. No matter what the marketing copy might say, the quality won't be that amazing. So if you want to buy a 3D scanner, just keep that at the back of your head. Take care and I'll see you in the next one.